Hey, welcome back guys. Today we've got something a little bit different. I'm kind of a history nerd and um, occasionally we get some old, old shoes or old, old boots in here. We've had some old turn of the century explore mountain climbing boots that still had the old uh, hobnails and spikes screwed into them. It like something out of National Geographic. Let's see, we've had some uh, World War II double buckle boots. We've had some Marine Brogans that when I cracked it open, I seriously was expecting to find like sand from Iwo Jima on it. It was, I mean, pretty cool. The, the, the gentleman who actually brought them in, bought them straight from the guy who uh, wore them during the war. And uh, I just love getting old stuff like that. To kind of really see how shoes were created back then, how they've evolved, you know, what was the point of that type of shoe. And today we've actually got a pair of Civil War Brogans. And uh, now these are reproduction because the, you know, the Civil War hobby and, and uh, studying the Civil War is still popular in the United States, especially down here in the South. And so this pair is actually made by a shoemaker named Tequila. And uh, I've seen his work before and he does some pretty good stuff. Um, soles are actually got pegs in them. That's how they're actually held together. Some of them are stitched. These actually have some milita uh, military hill rims on them. Look like some horseshoes, but this guy's just blown all the way through. And today we're gonna give these some more life so he can get back out there to the national parks or wherever he's gonna go and teach some more history. All right, so this is the bottom of what most of the shoes look like. And like I said um, earlier, these are actually used pegs. And there were actually more, if you look at what the quartermasters during the, the war actually ordered from the, um, the makers. They actually had more that were stitched than they had the, uh, the pegged um, on both sides, the north and the south. And one of the reasons why is because these pegs, just like on a pair of cowboy boots, how you often have pegs going through the waist. If the sole were to get dry, the leather will shrink and then the pegs can actually dry out and fall out. And if the pegs fall out, the whole sole falls off. So these are fine as long as you're walking on moist grass or mud or whatnot. But um, you, you started to see a lot of these after the war, they'd send them out west to like the cavalry units. And they had a lot, it's very dry out there. So they had a lot of issues with the soles falling off. It takes a while for these to break in. And this is a very, very crudely made shoe. And I don't say that it's any disrespect to the guy that made it because he made it exactly the way it was, it, they're supposed to be. These shoes were made in mass. Um, the Civil War was one of the first wars that really started implementing mass produce, produced shoes. And it wasn't, uh, even during this, uh, the early parts of the war, you actually had shoes that were straight. There was no right foot, left foot. The last were straight. And you just had to wear them until your feet started to make the shoe conform to you. But they did start coming out um, just prior to the war and during the war with the right foot, left foot. So the customer wants to actually keep his hill rims. Um, and so we're gonna take these off and then we'll read when we redo it and then we'll put these back on. They did do actually a lot of half sole replacements during the war. There's a buddy of mine who was doing some historical architectural stuff down at the Masonic Lodge in Franklin, Tennessee. And he was under the crawl space of the building. And this is an old Masonic Lodge. It was actually used as a barracks for Union soldiers during the war. And he actually found part of a brogan underneath there. It's pretty much just all deteriorated. As soon as he touched it, it pretty much just crumbled. But um, they did do half soles on um, some of these things. There we go. All right, so we've got the block off. And as you'll notice, this is all, I've already taken the, what we call the top lift off, but it was all leather. It's just all leather. This whole thing is leather. These, I mean, they didn't have concrete back then. You know, I mean, cobblestones is about the worst that you kind of had to worry about, but this is mostly made for walking on dirt roads, talking you know, on grass. But um, we're gonna go ahead and make some, some new blocks out of some, some new veg tan leather. And let's get this sole off. Now, while I'm doing this, you gotta remember, like I said, these things were crudely made. And 
they were made to get a soldier as far as you could but when you're a soldier and you're marching you know hundreds and hundreds of miles sometimes thousands of miles you're going to burn through these things and if the supply trains weren't able to keep up with the army or uh then you had to kind of make do so there's stories of on the, uh, at least on one on the confederate side where they had to uh, pull former shoemakers and cobblers that were actually in the army they had to pull them out of the rank and uh, they were repairing shoes and making shoes right on the side of the road to try to keep the soldiers from going barefoot even though a lot of them did go barefoot And out comes the, the pegs. I'm actually going to keep this because I want to know what the distance is for the pegs. Because a lot of the guys that make these reproduction boots are making these off of originals. And um, they pull their stitch width on the uppers and all the details they pull from originals. And we want to keep it as historically accurate as we can. So uh, I'll just try to get back to this. All right, so this is a this is gonna be a very simple resole on a simple shoe, and just to kind of keep with the authenticity of the era, we're just gonna use our house leather, which you know just a, a simple simple leather, and most of the time this is gonna be worn on grass, and so there's no real need to go with a high end quality leather. Let's put these on. All right guys, so we have put the new soles on and um, I'm gonna make some new blocks out of these. And I'm gonna kinda do it the old fashioned way. I'm gonna make my own. We've got a bunch of scrap leather from a, uh, a sole bin that we like to use. A lot of times as you get up towards the mid back on the, uh, on the sole bin, it starts to get a little looser than further down on the rear. And so uh, we like to use those for making blocks and I've just made a couple of patterns of the original block and then we'll just cut these out and keep going. I'm actually doing it the slow way. They actually have tools that do this that look like a big spur on a, a boot spur on a wheel and you just roll along and it pokes all these but I don't have one so I got to and don't quote me on this, but I know they had developed pegging machines that would automatically do this, and I can't remember exactly when those came about. It may have been the 20th century, but this is a little more labor intensive.
these are lemon wood pegs and I like to just dip a little bit into glue. Usually helps them to go in a little easier, but also then just helps them to uh, bite just a little bit more. And we don't want them going all the way in. We're actually gonna have to clip these off and then sand them down. But um, I've set my awl to the exact distance that it needs to, uh, the depth that needs to go in. So it's actually the next day and we're gonna finish up this pair of old brogans. We have got the soles all pegged on and attached. We're gonna put the hill blocks on. One of the things that we have at our disposal today that they didn't have back then is a lot stronger glue. So yes, I'm cutting a few corners by using some, obviously some modern technology, but I want them to last. So let's put the hill blocks on. All right, so I've made these hill blocks. They're, just, they're very crude, but they are the height that it needs to be like the original. And instead of using um, threaded nails like we normally would in most shoemakers use, we're going to use squared off iron nails that uh, would have been used at that time. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up the excess so we know exactly where the edge is so I can put all my, my nails around. So these are the old, they almost look like old square cut nails that you would see in the 1800s that people built houses with, but uh, they're just a lot thinner. And um, these will actually go all the way through the block and until it hits the, uh, uh, goes through the insole and the footbed. And then right when you see it start to kind of bend and curl, you know you've, you've sunk them as deep as they're gonna go. So it bent, we've reached the jack. That do them at a little bit of an angle. Gives a little bit more grip. This will be the top lift. We mostly have rubber. Uh, they didn't have it. Well, actually they did, but uh, not on shoes like this. So we're gonna put this and this will cover up those nails and then we'll put his heel plates back on this. So I'm actually gonna flip these around. This was actually on the other shoe and you can see where he's worn it on this side, but it's kind of like turning your rotors. I'll give him a little bit more life on his heel plates over on this side. Uh, again, he wanted to reuse these hill plates. All right. Normally we put a burnishing ink on here that's actually got some waxes in it, but these shoes were not meant to shine on the side and have a high gloss. Uh, obviously the dye recipes have changed over the century, but just a simple alcohol dye is gonna be the closest we can get to it. So we put the hill plates on 
and uh, these things get abused. I mean, they're out in the elements, um, in the wet grass and all, in the mud and all that. So we're just gonna give the uppers a little treatment with some of the Everest. And you might be able to see from here, but the uh, when I dyed these, they're not pitch black. And a lot of the older dyes back then had almost an opaque tint to them. They weren't, you had to go over multiple, multiple times before if you wanted to get them like real dark. So that's the thing that adds kind of to the authentic look to them. All right, this one's treated. And these things are basically done. All I'm gonna do now is actually just spray the bottoms of the soles with water just to let that soak in and let all these wood pegs expand and just really grip on. All right guys, so we finished up this pair of old Civil War brogans, so uh, reproduction old Civil War brogans. Uh, now, just a reminder that this was uh, not to be 100% authentic to history. We tried to use what we could. Obviously, we got modern glues, modern machinery, and this was not a complete history lesson for the shoes. It was just to give you all an idea of kind of the evolution of shoes, military shoes, and uh, just something a little different, have some fun with it. So uh, I don't want to get hammered by all the other historians out there. I'm a history guy myself, but like I said, this was not to, you know, every little detail I said is not the gospel cause there's so many variations out there with military boots. But thanks for watching this. If you like it, hit our subscribe button. We'll probably have some more military shoes uh, coming through here soon. And uh, hit the little bell, a little reminder, because we'll have more of these coming at you. Have a good one.